Yo guys, so before the video starts, I just wanted to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, my longtime friends over at Adam and Eve. We are partnering up today to give my audience a special deal, 50% off an item of your choice, plus free shipping when you check out with code JAMARI. That's J-A-M-A-R-I, JAMARI. There is no minimum purchase required, and who doesn't love free shipping? They have stuff for men, they have stuff for women, they have stuff for couples, and everyone on the spectrum. So treat yourself as someone special today with Adam and Eve using code JAMARI. So Bobby Althoff is a name that has set these internet streets of blaze for around the last month or so. It all really started when she interviewed no other than comedian Funny Marco, who is well known for his deadpan awkward style of humor, which is very popular in the modern era amongst comedians. And this clip from that interview kind of shows off what I'm talking about. Rip me out the plastic copy act, I'm brand new. <laughs> Rip me out the plastic copy act, I'm brand new. You know what that is? So as you guys can see, there's not really much to it. It's just like an hour of this back and forth awkward banter. But like I said, this type of thing is very popular. I don't find it to be very funny, but a couple of these clips went absolutely viral. And after this, we would soon see her get the attention of Tyga, Drake, Little Yachty, Mark Cuban. And all of a sudden, in the course of like 30 days, she suddenly had one of the hottest podcasts on earth. Now obviously this led to a lot of people speculating that she could actually be the world's very first industry podcast plant. This is something that has been very common within the music industry, where an artist comes out and sees this astronomic rise, and suddenly they're getting features with some of the biggest artists on the planet and basically just getting these opportunities and looks that people would not typically receive when they're first starting to get some buzz around their name. And this is where the term industry plant comes from because people feel like there's somebody in the background pulling these different strings and controlling the career of this person to make them basically come out of nowhere and seem bigger than life. You see, this woman started out on the mommy TikTok side of things, making videos like this, where, uh, you know, she still kind of shows off her awkward side. It's almost like she's making fun of the moms of TikTok. And basically, I would say that she was kind of doing the same type of dry humor. Hey, stop looking awkward. You look awkward. Smile. Just look entertained then. Like, play with your ring or something. Look entertained. Do anything. Let me just go to the bathroom. Maybe that'll be better. No. Okay. Wash your hands, but don't wash them too long. Make sure it's long enough that they know you washed your hands for the full time, but not too long. I don't really understand why people think this type of thing is funny. But then again, there's people who probably think the things that I find funny are completely idiotic. Obviously, in general, humor is one of the most subjective things on the planet. And so either way, she gets this Drake interview, and this is when she really started popping off. Am I your type? Um, I'd do it. Thank you. Like, I, yeah, like I'd do it. you do it? <laughs> I asked him your type, and you said I'd do it. <laughs> it's not funny. And so it was basically just an hour of this awkward situation. And obviously this is where the industry plant speculation began as people wondered, how is this girl who's only on her second podcast episode ever get Drake as a guest? We know by now that Drake does not like to do interviews. Any statement that comes out from him at this point is very controlled. When it comes to these type of things, he gets the final edit. They're filming on his cameras, he has the memory cards, and basically he just has a stranglehold over the content. I guess what I'm trying to say is this man would not just do an interview with anyone, and so for him to choose her of all people to do this interview with, people found that to be very fishy. You know, it'd be one thing if she was like a uh, DJ Academics, who by the time he started his podcast off the record, was already notorious for his work on Complex, Obviously, his YouTube channel had millions of subscribers and billions of views. He had already built this large fan base for himself, so it's not the craziest thing when he comes out with his podcast and gets some big-time guest. Whereas her, on the other hand, just comes out of left field at a mommy TikTok, and all of a sudden, within a month's time, she has one of the hottest podcasts on the planet. And this is actually her side of the story when it comes to how she got Drake to do this interview. Drake liked one of the videos I had uploaded, and he followed me. 
um, I didn't realize it at first. Marco called me and he was like, Bobby, look who just followed you. So I like, p- like filtered it to verified only people. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like why, <laughs> why would he follow me? He's like, he liked the video. And I was like, okay, I'm going to like shoot my shot to Drake. I don't know how this, I th- I thought the chance of him replying was like a 1%. And then the chance of him saying yes was like 0.00. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. So I was like, come on my podcast. I said, when are you going to come on my podcast? And he just was he said, game right yeah, away. He was ready to do it. I flew out there like wow. three days later. Wow. And then and then you're off That's to the crazy. races. Now you can kind of get anybody you want. Yeah. So it's what if one thing... Obviously, people felt like this story was a whole lot of cap and that there must have been someone behind the scenes that made this all happen. Here she goes into more detail about the Drake interview. But Drake gave me the social clips that I could use. And then he was like, which one are you going to pick? I was like, I'll, I'll do this one. He's like, okay, let's test. Let's just tease it. And like, obviously, I'm going to trust him because my initial thing was like, I was just going to upload the video to YouTube like I had always been doing. I had no strategy. I was on my own. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even like sure how to upload to Apple at all. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to even make this a real podcast. Um, and po- I posted the thing. I got a message from uh, Andrew at WME. He says, like, I'm part of the touring team. Can we talk? I said, okay, because I had like I, I needed I didn't know what I was doing. He they they signed with me that night. And then So the- did you just didn't meet with anybody else. You're just like this guy hit you. So there she says a day after she dropped this clip, apparently some talent agent sees it. He calls her up that night and they signed this miraculous deal. No lawyers hired, no one looked at the contract. Nah, she just trusted this guy. And this is what DJ Academics had to say about WME, her talent agency an agency that's never had any f-ing foothold in podcasting comes out with an individual that has the biggest guest. So, so she's with WME, William Morris Endeavors. She goes out eight podcasts later. She's like one of the biggest podcasts, podcasters now. Guess the, guess the irony. Everybody, including her big guests, including the biggest guest, Drake, guess who they're signed to? WME. This is where favors get set up. I'm pretty sure somebody at WME started help pulling the strings to set all this in motion. So that's how DJ Academics feels. He's obviously very connected within the industry and has a very good understanding of the back end when it comes to all things entertainment in both the traditional sense and in this online era. Would you date someone that looks like me? Because there's just a person. What does that mean? Like, looks exactly like me. They have a twin. Maybe. If I had a twin, Maybe. would you date them? If she was, like, cool and, like, you know? If no, I, she's if exactly I, if, like me. If she's I, like, connected like, with her, you know? She's exactly like me. I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, how you are, though. I've, I've never really been around you, so, you know? Yeah, I'm exactly like this. All the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. Is it kind of strange to anyone else that this woman who is married with children is constantly asking during these interviews with these rappers if basically they would go out with her, if basically they would sleep with her if they like her? Day. Let me take your plane with me to New York. Someday. Do you want to see me on Spirit Airlines? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> and just a kind of unrelated side note from that interview, Mark Cuban, why are your feet so fucking dirty? You were so goddamn rich that you could pay someone a very nice salary to wash your feet. Now you might get some freaks within the application process, but I'm sure you could hire someone else to vet out all the freaks. As a matter of fact, your feet should never be this dirty. My feet have never looked like this in my entire life. Like if you're watching this video right now, I want you to look down at your foot. If it looks anything like this, like if it resembles a fucking bruised banana, you need to reevaluate your life choices. Either way guys, the drama really started when she did this interview next with little Yachty. Why are your teeth so white? Are they real? You grew them yourself. I paid for myself. Do you have veneers? I do have veneers. That's why they're so white. You're pretty smart. How much? Ninety thousand. Ninety thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. I think they were worth it. Cause I I, I want a young thug's dentist. He had the best veneers I've ever that? seen. Who? Young thug. Uh, who's that? So she's profiting off this urban culture. She don't even know who Young Thug is. This obviously rubs some people the wrong way. But the drama didn't start until she made this comment about the little Yachty interview. Oh, Because he was awkward. I walked into his house. He didn't even, like, say hi to me. So then I was like, Sid, let's go to the bathroom. So then we go to the bathroom. (laughs) And then we, like, get out. And then he's, like, um, he's just sitting there with, like, his two assistants. And he's not even acknowledging that I'm, like, in the room. And my camera guy's, like, setting up. I'm just sitting there, like... 
skin crawling. on my phone like tr- I'm like trying and then he comes up he's like oh hi he gives me like a half hug and I'm just like hi then goes back to his spot and I'm like dude I don't even want to do this I'm texting my friend like Ashley I need to leave this is so awkward I don't want it like what am I doing here and then she's like lean into this during the interview like call it out so then during our interview mm-hmm. I was able to be like why did you do that like why did you make me feel like that material. yeah so it was actually really it worked out so after this clip went viral people were basically saying that she was buying the hand that feeds her saying that she was ungrateful And people also question this like overall change in her temperament when she went on this show with Dave Portnoy and his crew versus the way she acts around these various rappers. And essentially there was a lot of negative commentary around her name. And then Gasoline really got poured on that fire when she posted this video of herself at a Drake concert and it went viral. I mean, I won't lie to you guys. This video actually made me like her a little bit more. I love how Drake's in the background. I tried, I tried, I tried. Really trying to hype up the crowd. And she's just in there with this bold face expression after he literally gave her an entire career. So this was like double buying that hand that feeds you. Kind of saying like, hey, I came to your show and it was so shitty that I had no expression the entire time. And then people know that after this concert, the two unfollowed each other on Instagram and the interview was deleted from YouTube. So then people obviously started suspecting that these two have some serious beef. Dave Portnoy once again jumps in on the drama. Silvana's like, I heard that Bobby slept with Drake and is getting a divorce. So I asked her, I DM Bobby. What, you asked her, did you sleep with Drake and are you getting a divorce? Yeah. (laughs) She's like, I'm not commenting on that publicly. Wait, so you just outed her? Oh. You just outed her not public comment? And so that was the rumor going around was that she smashed Drake backstage and that she'll now be getting a divorce from her husband. Well, she responded to those claims via her Instagram story saying, I didn't even want to do this podcast and she's talking about the podcast with Dave in the first place and now so much negativity is coming from it. I'm going to leave it alone after this, but this is the uncensored DM between Dave and I. Here's this boy Dave getting the scoop saying, my girlfriend says you hooked up with Drake and got divorced. I am saying that is not true. And then she says, I'm not commenting publicly, but off the record, you're right, that is not true. And so at this point, we really don't know what the truth is surrounding this woman. We don't know necessarily what's real and what's fake when it comes to her whole story, her whole arc. She really likes to go with this idea that she's broke, that she's not making any sort of money off these podcasts, that everything has been organic up until this point, that she just was shooting her shot with Drake and he said yes. But as of right now, like if this ends up being her actual downfall, it has to be one of the biggest rises and falls that we've ever seen within the podcast space in this short amount of time. I mean, with podcasting in general, I feel like it's kind of a slow burn. It's not very often that you see someone come out with a podcast and it's just like a smash hit, even if said person is a celebrity or a big comedian or anything like that. But I wanna know what you guys think about this situation and what you think about these industry plants in general, whether it be in music or just general entertainment. As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy, the Tana Superman, and some other industry plants out here need to be covered, so I'm out. Peace!